my foot's asleep and it really hurts and I can't get up. So I'm just gonna have to stay here for a minute. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Kelsey. I am a homeschooling mom to four children ages 11, 7, 2, and 5 months old. And today I'm excited to share with you our Kind Kingdom curriculum that we are going to be using for next year. Okay, so if you are new to my channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up so it can help the YouTube algorithm. And please, if you have not yet, subscribe. Um, that just helps my channel to grow and to um, reach more people that way. Okay, so let's get into this. So if you have not seen my video right here, I just basically talk about how we're going to be using the Kind Kingdom for the upcoming school year. I'm going to have, like I said, I have an 11 year old and I have a seven year old and they are kind of in fifth, sixth grade, second grade level. Um, so I'm very excited to be using this with them. This is more of an in-depth look of that video. Um, so I'm very excited to turn around the camera and show you guys. So this is going to be covering things like our Bible, our history, our science, a little bit of our handicrafts and enrichment and different things like that. So quick shout out to my brother who blessed us with this Epson Eco Tank. He is moving and we were helping him and he said, do you guys want this printer? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> we have needed a new printer for many years. The other one that we had was probably 12 years old and what a huge blessing this has been. And this is actually how I was just able to print some of the student pages to show you guys. So this is Real Life Homeschool. We have had sick kids all week and so I hear them upstairs crying. I hear them upstairs whining. God bless my husband. He's trying to keep them busy so I can get this video filmed and edited and out to you guys by tomorrow. So there's that. I wanted to quickly go over some things that you need to consider. As I said in my other video, um, I purchased this printed. Someone had got a printed copy and accidentally ordered too much or too many copies of what they needed. And so um, I purchased the PDF when it was on sale. Um, I can't remember exactly how much it was. It was around $40. It's currently $49.99 as of today when I make this video. So the frugal person in me says, try to find it on sale. They get on their email list. They do regular sales throughout the year. Um, and then printing, I think I paid her $30 or something like that. And then thanks to my brother for um, <laughs> gifting us that printer. Um, I am able to print my younger son's student sheets. Normally I would probably have just paid to get them printed or tried to have my pre husband print a few out at work every now and then um, in order to keep our costs down. But uh, luckily now I can print it at home and it doesn't use a ton of ink. So I went ahead and printed in some of that for you guys today, the first few weeks of school. You need to consider the cost of the PDF, the cost to have it printed, and then the cost of the books. Definitely try to get as many books as you can from your library, your inner library loan, um, places like Hoopla and Libby and Overdrive. Also YouTube has a ton of these videos. I will actually link my playlist down below where I found a lot of these books on YouTube so that you don't have to purchase them because some of them are hard to find and you're maybe only reading them like once. And so for me, I only tried to purchase the books that I knew would be very, very difficult to get, books that I could probably use again in the future or books that we were going to be using for more than once. Books that we were using for a week or two at a time, books that we were using for months at a time. So that is what I purchased. So without further ado, I am going to show you a deeper look inside of The Kind Kingdom. I talked about it in my other video, but this is a 30 week um, resource. So if you are like us who homeschool all year, you're probably just going to take weeks off um, where you're not doing history, science, and things like that, or you can supplement some things. So here is your month at a glance. You can actually get the first week, I believe, free from their website of all of their curriculums. So um, I think you can see things like this in that, but um, we it is broken down into months, and I believe, yes, it is eight months long. So. The first month you are going to be focused on The Magician's Nephew, which is the Chronicles of Narnia books. 
you are going to be doing Grimm's Fairy Tales, Kings and Queens of England, Early Middle Ages, Seeds, Bees, Gardens, Weather. Month two is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Grimm's Fairy Tales, More Kings and Queens of England, The Magna Carta, Joan of Arc, Queen Elizabeth, Castles, Cathedrals, and Seasons. We, month three, it is The Horse and His Boy, which is again a Chronicles of Narnia book. Um, Grimm's Fairy Tales, The Renaissance, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Galileo, Isaac Newton, Stars, Planets, and Gravity. Month four is Prince Caspian, Grimm's Fairy Tales, Gutenberg, Martin Luther, Christian Saints, Winter, Nature, Animals of Europe, and The Printing Press. Um, month five, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, uh, Shakespeare, Shackleton, Explorers, Ships, Seas, World Geography, and Survival. Month six is The Silver Chair, Shakespeare, Revolutions, World War I, Flight, Nurses, Turtles, and Snakes. Month two is The Last Battle, Shakespeare, Holocaust, World War II, Invention, Industry, Victory, Garden, and Generosity. And month eight, you are actually going to be reading the Winnie, Winnie the Pooh book. Um, so you are done with your Chronicles of Narnia book and you're moving into Winnie the Pooh for the last month. And then that focuses on communism and its effects, tadpoles, spring, and flowers. This is a thank you from Jennifer Pepito, who is the author of The Kind Kingdom. Then you have your daily detail instructions. So I'm not going to go too much over this, but um, she does um, talk about different things, like 10 things to do with your children before age 10, reading and writing, oral narration, memorization, hearing and listening, Family worship, arts and crafts, field trips in the library, work and service, discipline, play and exploration. She talks about having a daily flow, like here's a sample schedule and why that's important. She talks about understanding the grid, which I will show you in just a moment, but um, you're going to focus on things like Bible, reading and language arts, math, phonics, spelling, and handwriting. History and science, practical skills and art, Fridays, free reading, student sheets, and recipes. And then she has a few final thoughts on there. So then you are into month one of The Kind Kingdom. And I already told you what month one was about. You have your supply list, so you have your books that you're going to be using, your free reading for your K through three and your four through six. And then you have what you will need in your schoolroom, so different supplies like a map and student sheets, watercolors, things like that. And then you have things that you will probably need from the craft or hardware store, so things like cardboard, garden seeds, planter box, etc., etc. And then you have your kitchen supplies that you will probably more than likely need for your recipes, I would assume. And then these are your readings. So these might be like, this is a hymn, mnemonic, and then you have like a poem and things like that. So these are gonna be the readings and things that you are going to memorize and focus on. Here is your weekly grid. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays are designated for your days off. We actually already kind of use this model, a four day of school week model. Um, and Fridays are more of our fun school Friday or our enrichments or things like that. My boys are actually doing an enrichment group this year that is going to be meeting on Wednesdays. So we will probably shift these two days to these two days. I love that the curriculum does incorporate a Friday in and it actually, if you go back to back here where it talks about Fridays, it will kind of explain to you why they have Fridays free. So there's that. Um, so your Bible is just going to be doing hymns, reading, um, scripture, and praying. Your reading is going to be doing your um, read-alouds, which is, again, the Chronicles of Narnia. Your language arts is going to be your copy work. So first you're doing copy work of John 1-1. You're doing um, definitions of character traits the um, Kings and Queens of England copy work, and then you're going to be reading um, Grimm's Fairy Tales Cinderella. For science and history, you're going to read and do timeline card, Then, so it kind of goes back and forth. So on Mondays and Wednesdays, you're doing social studies. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, you are doing science, which is perfect because that's the exact model that we already follow. Um, we also have math is blank because math is going to vary um, per grade and level and ability and things like that. 
For phonics, spelling, and grammar, they basically just say focus on new spelling words, do review, uh, do a grammar or writing lesson, a writing focus, and then we have practical skills and arts. So we have our salt dome map of the British Isles, a nature walk, polished silver, and dirt cups. So let's look over here and kind of talk about what the heck that all means. So for Bible, you're going to sing the hymn of the month, which is my hope is built on nothing less, which is back on this page. You are going to do your reading of chapter one, then you will tell, write, or draw a narration. You are going to do your copy work, which is in your student sheets. You, which you don't even need the student sheet, but it's included in the PDF, so you might as well utilize it, right? Uh, then you are going to read the Kings and Queens of England and Scotland book. Then you are going to make a timeline card. I think you can actually purchase the timeline cards. I have not done that. I did not purchase any of the extras yet, but um, I can go online and show you those. And then you will watch History of Britain in 20 minutes on YouTube. Introduce new spelling words for phonics, spelling, and grammar. Free reading. Read 15 to 30 minutes from the independent reading list. And then you will do your practical skills and art. So on Monday, you are doing make a salt dough map of the British Isles. We did a salt dough map last year of landforms, and my kids absolutely loved it. On Tuesdays, it's a very similar layout. The only difference is that you are doing science, so you're doing something a little bit different there. Um, for you are going to be reviewing phonograms or spelling words, depending on what your child needs to do there, and you're doing a nature walk. So that's what you're doing on Tuesday. Wednesday, again, a very similar model, but this time you are going back to history and you're going to choose a monarch to create a presentation on and you're gonna work on notes. So you're actually learning on making a presentation and you're going to present it to either your family or a co-op. Um, and then for this, it talks about do a writing or grammar lesson, they recommend Junior Analytical Grammar and IEW. So I've seen a lot of people use IE Double Fables. Um, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's the Fables book. I'll put a picture of it like right here. Um, a lot of people use that. We are actually using Winston Grammar for my oldest and he is doing just right, but I really did want to use the IEW Fables book, but he didn't, he didn't go for that. So Anyway, <laughs> and then your practical skills are polished silver. Now, that, that's probably a good life skill, right? But I don't know about you guys, but I don't know if I'm going to be having my kids do that. So the great thing about <laughs> curriculum is that it can be catered to you and your family. Okay, now on Thursday, you are doing the same thing in Bible, in reading, in language arts, You except you are going to be doing... A favorite, so instead of copy work on Fridays or Thursday, sorry, you're going to read one of your fairy tales. On this week, it is Cinderella. You're going to draw, write, or act out the story. Then on science, you're going to be doing a notebooking page and starting a composting pile. Um, for your writing focus, you are going to rewrite the fairy tale in your own words. So this is very similar to the IEW model anyways, right? That's kind of what they're basically doing is they're rewriting stories that kids know. Then you have your free reading and your cooking day, which is dirt cups, which I will be showing you the recipes here in a moment. And that is it. That is what you are doing for the entire year. The only thing that changes is your resources. So, you know, you're doing different subjects throughout the year, you're doing um, different things like that. So the very same thing every week. And you are able to customize this to what you wanna do. If there's a book you didn't get, you can always substitute a different book. You know, if there's, I have a crying baby, I think I have to get. Okay, so here is the recipe book. So these are just pretty simple recipes. I do not think we will do these every single week, unfortunately. I just don't think I have the time or the energy to do these every single week. So I definitely know we will be doing dirt cups because that's my kids, one of my kids' favorite things to do is have little cute dirt puddings. 
I used to make elderberry syrup all the time, so that would be probably fun to do. The sugar cookie solar system seems really fun. Probably, we love to bake during Christmas, so if we don't do this, we'll be baking plenty. Um, my kids love hot chocolate, so I'm sure they want to do that. So definitely make sure that you're doing, you're not trying to overdo it, right? This is not something that you have to do. This is just something that adds enrichment to your homeschool and definitely is something fun that you guys can do to connect as a family. But it is not a necessity. So just remember that. I'm also telling myself. I am reminding myself about that. So let's look at the dirt cups. So you will need one pack. Okay. Mm -hmm. You will need one package of instant chocolate pudding, two cups milk, three cups whipping cream, one package of chocolate sandwich cookies, and one package of gummy worms and fresh mint leaves. So again, this is a pretty inexpensive recipe. I know a lot of people have actually like Turkish delight since it's one of the things that they read about in the Chronicles of Narnia books. That's something that they really wanted to make, but it just seemed a little too, um, they didn't really want to make it or they didn't want to buy a certain recipe, uh, certain ingredients. So they actually just purchased it and that is an option too. We're also doing an art study. Um, I believe it's once a week or you're looking at it a couple different times, but it starts in week two with St. George and the dragon where you kind of talk about it and it gives you information and things like that. So it has it for weeks two, three, and four. And then, so here are those. These are very nice. I don't know who printed this. I wish I could tell you guys, but they are very nice quality and they're very beautiful. So I'm excited to incorporate that a little bit more this year. Okay, so this is the cursive student sheets. Um, so the thing I don't love about the cursive ones is that they were only one level, I believe, of the cursive sheets. This is just the one that they, um, the person that I bought it from had, and my son is um, 11 and he currently does cursive. So the thing I don't like about it is that there's not enough room or an extra sheet to copy the passage. But it's not, if you look on the actual PDF, this is a little bit lighter and it seems like it's more like you actually trace over it, um, but I don't love it. So he is going to have to write this in a separate notebook, which I'm not super excited about because then he won't have the things like the pictures. I mean, he'll probably honestly just have to cut them out or pull each page out as he does them. I don't know. Seems like it's a waste of paper to me <laughs> to have it be done this way. Um, I'll show you what the other one looks like that I wish that this one had looked like. And I could easily just probably replicate that myself. I'm sorry. I have a very fussy baby. So this is essentially what you're doing for your copy work. You can also do things like um, write your narration or draw your narration or whatever you want to do on these pages, color or things like that. So this is what the uh, cursive level looks like. This is what I just printed for my seven-year-old. I believe I showed you guys in my other video the traceable one, but I actually, he's more at this level. He's finishing up the first grade handwriting without tears and this seems to be more on par with that. So this is what that looks like. I'm probably going to put this in a binder. Honestly, if these had not already come bound, I was probably just going to do that. Um, I actually like a three ring binder is my preferred way. So this is what that looks like. So this is the way that I wish that they had done it with the cursive. I wish that this was with it at cursive on the top and then this at the bottom. I think that this would have worked out a lot better for my oldest and again, we'll make it work because it's already printed, I already own it um, and I don't really have the time or energy to redo my own. I probably would have at a different season in my life but at this current season, it's we're just gonna make it work. So um, this is the, there are several printed versions. There's kindergarten copy work, there's simple tracing, there's simple copy work where you're kind of tracing over the letters. This one I believe is the elementary um, copy work book, I think is what it says. Yeah, so this is the student sheets elementary version. So you are just doing character qualities, you are doing your, um, your rhymes that you're doing and then they give you this 
page to do this on. The thing, so here's, here's the thing I don't love about this one is that, okay, so it has it for this one. So I guess you're going to copy this on here and then draw the slipper on here. But then on these, on certain other pages, they don't have a space for you like on this one. They don't have the drawing space on this one like they did on the other one. So <laughs> it's kind of like a catch, you know, a catch 22. Like the one that I, the things that I like about this one, I don't like on the other one. The things that I like on the other one, I don't like about this one, but it is what it is. So definitely something to consider. The baby has been fed and is good now. <laughs> Give me a heart down in the comment section if you are or have homeschooled with infants and toddlers before because it is rough, y'all. Let's encourage one another down there. So I'm gonna start with the read aloud. So I actually have the first Chronicles of Narnia books. Um, I actually just found the other two at the at Goodwill the other day, but um, decided not to purchase them. They are free at my libraries and I probably will want to be utilizing the audiobooks by then. I just get so worn out um, doing read alouds all year long. So I do have the first few. I also have Winnie the Pooh that I got. It's a pretty old copy of Winnie the Pooh. This is one of the science books that you are going to be using. This is the Christian Liberty Nature Reader. I've actually been pretty curious about these. This is book four, which focuses on like turtles and snakes and insects and things like that. It's got really beautiful pictures and the short, the stories are very short, just a little bit of information and then a review section down here at the bottom. If you have never seen inside the nature anatomy book, this is what it looks like. It's got really pretty pictures and then information. My kids just love to leaf through these. So there is that one. You also will need farm anatomy. I believe you use farm anatomy at the beginning of the year and then work through nature anatomy. So there is what that looks like on the inside. Here is the book that they suggest for the um, collection of Grimm's fairy tales. My, I don't know about you, but my kids love fairy tales. We have quite a few fairy tale books and they just love them. I actually read a book, I think it was Simplicity Parenting, that talked about why kids love fairy tales and why they're actually really good for them. So I'm excited about this. It has really pretty pictures. It seems like each story is just a few pages long as well. So there's that one. This is one that you are using at the beginning of the year. This is the Kings and Queens of Scotland book. And as I showed you in the other video, it does have a pull out poster. So that's nice. So it tells who all the Kings and Queens of England and Scotland were. Although Elizabeth II is on here. So they'll need to update that one, unfortunately. But that's something else you can talk to your kids about if you're doing the Kind Kingdom this year. There's that one. I also, this one is not required or even mentioned, but I had seen a couple people mention it. So my kids love these Usborne Lift the Flat books. And this one is on the History of Britain, Sea Inside book. And my kids love these. They will just, it doesn't even matter the topic. They will just sit down and flip through these and read about it. And my son reads the like fraction book all the time. <laughs> so he knows all kinds of stuff about fractions and these are just fun. And I got this one off eBay. So you can find these used pretty easily. This is the one that you are doing during the Michelangelo book. I try to get as many books as I can used. And that's again, just my frugal, frugal living. But so that's what that one looks like. Here is the Leonardo da Vinci book it is by the same author. So it looks very, very similar. Also, if I'm going too fast, I'm sorry, but you can just feel free to pause the video or slow it down or whatever you need to do. Here is one of the books that you are reading up and down in the, up in the garden, down in the dirt. We really like these books by Kate Messner. So 
um, if there's ever one that calls for it, I will use any excuse to purchase it, but I know that my library does have a lot of her books. They're just really, just really cute, and my kids really enjoy these books. This is actually one that we already had on our shelf, so this is about um, where during, I think it was World War One, where the sides, like, agreed to like not fight each other and they actually played games together i think it was during christmas um so it's just a really neat story my husband actually saw it at the thrift store and was telling me about it and was like oh you should get this for school and then we actually ended up using it i think i bought it a year or two ago and now we actually need it for our curriculum this is the dk invention book i really enjoy dk books i don't know about you guys I like that they have realistic pictures and my kids like to flip through these as well. This is the Draw Europe book. This is the one that I told you guys about in the other video where you start out with something really, really simple and then by the end of the book you have got all of Europe drawn and apparently a lot of people said do not skip out on this because it's actually a lot of fun and your kids will enjoy seeing how far they have come with this this is something we have not focused a ton on is map work and geography and things like that we do we have been doing the 50 states for the last couple of years but this will be a nice change of pace um, my son's just been doing state study reports every week so this will be fun he really enjoys drawing and art and so I think he'll enjoy this one the a Child's Introduction to the Night Sky. This is one that you are working on. I believe this is from a creationist perspective. This is a Christian curriculum. And, you know, that she talks about the Sabbath and things like that. So, and obviously you're incorporating Bible and all of that. So there's that. How a Seed Grows. I knew that we needed this one and I actually found it at a book sale so I just went ahead and bought it we we really like these let's read and find out science books our library has quite a few on different topics and my kids always really enjoy reading those you wouldn't want to live without nurses my kids really like these books as well we honestly don't usually read through the whole thing we usually just read a few pages out of it I don't know exactly what you're gonna be using this one like which pages you're going to be doing and everything like that. A Year in a Castle. This just seems really fun about what the different months of the year would look like in the castle. Isaac Newton, The Scientist Who Changed Everything. This is just a Nat Geo kids book. We also really like these books. We will get these on various topics from our libraries, but that is just what that looks like. Alfred the Great, this is by, this is written by Jennifer Pepito who wrote The Kind Kingdom and so it has just got really cute illustrations and it's not very thick at all. It seems fairly short so I think my kids will like this one. This is actually not the version of Stone Soup that they're supposed to do um, but if I can't get it from the library, we own this version. Honestly, the story in itself is pretty much the same but... This is another one that I knew that we needed and I saw it at a book sale so I just went ahead and purchased it. And Jim Arnosky books are always good to have. They have very nice illustrations. They are very much uh, living books. So, and I don't know if you guys know this about me. Some of you might, but I absolutely hate frogs. So I am not looking forward to some of the frog studies. So really quickly, I just wanted to show you what a week would look like all put together. So I've shown you all of the components separately. Now I want to put them all together. So I'm just going to pick a random week. So here's week 10. We're going to be singing the hymn, which is And Can It Be. You are going to read Acts 1, Acts 2, Acts 3, Acts 4 this week, and then you are going to pray. So you're going to do your hymn, read, pray. Um, the reading for this week is the third Chronicles of Narnia book, The Horse and His Boy. You are doing chapters five, six, seven, and eight. So here is your copy work of Acts 1, 8. Michelangelo quote. Your copy work of The Wind poem. Then you're going to read Grimm's fairy tale. 
And then you're going to, for your fairy tales, read Mother Holly. You are going to read Michelangelo, pages one through 10, which is a famous art. So these are the pages that you are going to be reading. And funny enough, this, <laughs> this book doesn't have page numbers. So I guess I'm gonna have to figure that out. Then the next day you will do 11 through 20, Wednesday 21 through 30, and 31 through the end on Thursday. Your math lessons will vary, obviously. You will do spelling words, review of phonics or spelling words, a grammar or writing lesson, and then for your writing focus for this week, you are doing, you're rewriting this fairy tale, Mother Holly, in your own words. And then you will look at the last judgment. So that is our art work for week 10. So there is the last judgment, which is by Michelangelo. And here is your information on that, that you will talk to your students about. You will do a map of the Vatican and visit a cathedral or mission. So look at a map of Vatican city and note the location of the Sistine Chapel in St. Peter's Basilica. Make your own map of Vatican City or make a map of your nearest city. Painting the Sistine Chapel. On Wednesday, you will pretend to paint the ceiling of the Sistine cha Chapel. Take butcher paper to the ceiling of your dining table or make a scaffold by placing a thick board across the rungs of two equal size ladders or sawhorses and tape butcher paper to a low ceiling. Use common sense, right? Draw and paint a picture on the roof of your chapel. So I think my kids would actually really love that. That sounds really a lot of fun. And then on this day, you're making sourdough bread. So that is what you are doing. So this down here where it says visit a cathedral or mission, I assume it means like get on YouTube and like do a virtual field trip or if you can do a regular field trip, you could do that on Friday. So that is what it practically is going to look like for the kind kingdom. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, make sure to leave a comment, subscribe, like, and I will see you next time. Bye.